Hi, my name is Tarun Chaudhary. I'm a data warehouse specialist solutions architect here at AWS. Customers across various industries rely on Amazon Redshift to run vision critical workloads involving sensitive data, such as personally identifiable information because Amazon Redshift provides comprehensive security capabilities out of the box. In this demo, we'll be talking about a good use case of column level access control to secure the PII data. A finance department that has access to all the customer data while a sales department that can only view and update market segment and account balance data. Let's see how it works. For this demo, we're using a SQL client and created a demo schema. Under the demo schema, as you can see, there are tables, customer nation, and there's a view, and there's a materialized view. The first thing that we need to do here is to create a user that we can test our column level access controls. So first user that we create is a finance user. Then we are going to create one more user. That's the sales user. Once the users are created, we are going to provide a select and update permission to the finance user on the customer table. Once the permission is granted for select, let's grant permission on the view to finance user again. Next, on the materialized view, grant select to finance. Once we have all these permissions set up, let's find out how finance can access these tables. So we're going to set the authorization for the session to finance user. As you can see, the current user now is finance. Next thing is just write a select star from customer table and see, so we can see the data. So essentially that tells us that the grant was successful. Similarly for the view, we're going to do a quick check. View we can access and the materialized view now. So we do have access to all these tables and views that we just provide grant on. To finance user. Next, just try out the update statement because we did provide the update grant as well. Successfully. Now I just reset the session authorization to the admin user. Next thing to try is to see what column level access we have currently set up in our schema on these tables. So we are just running a metadata query that tells us that right now there's nothing set up. Next, let's grant some column level access on the tables. And we are choosing the customer table here. We are providing market segment column and account balance column grant to sales user. As you can see, the query failed. This is because only a table's owner or a super user can grant column level privileges and to maintain simple security model. Next, we're going to run a query or a grant permission without the grant option. And as you can see, it ran successfully. The customer table columns, market segment, and account balance have access to sales user now similarly for the view both the columns have access now to the sales user and for the materialized view as well so both the columns can be accessed by sales user next uh, let's see the metadata again and as you can see there are grants on these columns to the sales user Next, we are going to try some SQL statements um, to test the 
permissions that we have granted on the columns of customer table. So we just set the session authorization to sales user. As you can see, the current user is sales now. So we're going to write some select statements that will select star from the tables, views, and the materialized view. Since we gave the permission for sales user only to two columns, you would see a permission denied message uh, when we ran the query on the table, view, and the materialized view as well. So by authorizing these users, for example, sales in this example, we are just authorizing permission on columns, not the entire tables. And that's the idea of running those select star queries. Next, we are going to just select only those two columns that we provided grants on from the customer table first. And you'll see the query returned with the values in these two columns. Similarly, for the view, and the materialized view. Next, let's try out the update statement. Since we have provided sales user access to the account balance and market segment table, you would see that we can update those values if we have provided both the columns in the update statement. On the other hand, if we try out an update statement with updating the account balance table, which we have access on, but in the where clause, a nation ID column, which we don't have access on, the statement would fail with the permission denied error. Next, let's just try out resetting the session to the admin user and we'll revoke some of the permissions that we grant on the market segment column to the sales user. So now the sales user doesn't have access to the market segment column. And now we're going to set the sales authorization for the session. As you can see, the current user now is going to be sales. So this session is for user sales. We are going to try a select query after the revoke statement. And as you can see, there's permission denied because we have revoked the market segment column permission from the user. But the account balance column should still be able to show results as you can see it is. Next, we are going to run a query on the view, which the sales user still has access to the market segment column, which we revoked for the table. So the reason for this is views execute with the permission of the view owner. So it will still continue to work as long as the views owner still has column or table level privileges on the base tables used by the view. To prevent unauthorized access of the sensitive data, the column level privileges for the user sales should be revoked from the view as well. Next, let's just reset the session to the admin user. Once we set the authorization to the admin user, as you can see, select current user is admin user. We're going to revoke the permissions uh, from sales users on all the customer tables, materialized views, and the view as well. Once the permissions are revoked, I'm going to run a select query on all of these tables and views to see if I'm still able to run query and select the information that we provided permissions in the previous session. I'm setting back the authorization to sales again. Now the current user is sales. This, this, this session is authorized 
to run as sales user. And I'm going to run some select queries now. So let's just first select from the customer table, the market segment and the account balance, which we earlier provided access to from the view as well. As you can see, all these permissions are denied because we have revoked the permission on these tables and views by using the revoke statement. And this concludes our demo. Thanks for watching the video.